Hello everyone, welcome to the Moon and Mini Guide. For this, I'm only allowed a couple pages of script at most, so let's just get through it really quick. Her Scythe Ensig, although it looks very similar to Mordex's, actually works quite differently. Obviously, you can tell it probably specializes in upward dodges because of this upward hit, but it actually has a couple unique properties because of these long active frames. You'll notice, for the entire duration of this orange section, the hitbox is active, meaning if your opponent even spot dodges, which typically lasts longer than usual, you're still able to cover it because it's still active by the time their invuln is out. Out. It's super great because it means that you can use the same timing for a spot dodge like that and an upward dodge like this. It also covers the upward diagonals with a couple different movement options. If you dash forward or chase dodge, you're able to cover an upward out. And if you hit from the far long range of it, you can just stand still and do it that way. Your spacing does have to be quite accurate for that because if you hit a super close side light, it's just going to straight up miss. Along a similar vein, you may find yourself overshooting this move a lot with dodges like that because you do have to hit it with this very edge of the side light. Maybe right here will hit. Yeah, not even that was good enough. You got to do it very, very accurately so that the edge hitbox and the active frames can pick up at the very, very end. It's quite accurate and you have to hit with this downward portion of it, but if you do hit that very specific side light, you can cover a bunch of dodges at once. This is quite different from a lot of scythe characters because for them, you want to hit the side light super close to get these ensigs, but for Moonin, you kind of want to hit it pretty far. Soft side light into ensig like this is probably one of the most obvious signature strings that Moonin has to offer, so let's talk about that for a little bit. This string is completely inescapable if you try to jump because of this vertical hitbox. Jump up, you're still going to be hit by it. Jump to the right, you're still going to be hit by it. And jump to the left, you're still going to be hit by it. Now, what makes this different from Mordex's is, is that although it's unjumpable, it is still fast fallable. So if I set this bot to stun, we can see exactly when the bot is active. I'm going to sidelight, instantly ensig, pause the game, control the bot now, initiate a fast fall, and we'll see that I can escape it. Not necessarily the easiest input to time, but still very doable. So that means if you catch someone's dodge and you want to sidelight into ensig them to KO, it's not necessarily guaranteed. You have to hit the sidelight in a very specific way, maybe up high, so that they can't fast fall it, or your opponent has to miss the fast fall input, which to be fair is not the easiest thing to hit, but they still can do it. Overall, you can cover a bunch of dodges with this move. It's really prime real estate for Scythe because you're hitting people into the air and then you can cover the same area. Be careful though, this move is quite finicky. You might find yourself overshooting or undershooting a lot because of the momentum properties. If you are looking to pick up Moonin, then I definitely recommend spending some time trying to learn the ins and outs of this move because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you have the dodge read, your opponent is dead to rights, and then you completely overshoot it because you're not necessarily too familiar with the properties of the NSIG. Otherwise, its other properties are pretty good. I mean, you can jump before uh, landing on the ground around there, which means that you're out of recovery time pretty early. It's a great move. I mean, the amount of active frames makes it pretty unique in covering dodges. You just got to be a little bit careful because the movement properties can sometimes be a little bit weird. Okay, I went to go eat dinner, but I'm now back to talk about side zig. And I know one of you is going to ask. It, it was chicken. I had chicken. Sidesig has a deceptive amount of active frames. It starts earlier than you think it does and ends earlier than you think it does. You'll notice she does this little flip and then sends out this musical blast, but the hitbox actually starts after this first rotation here before she even sends out anything. Then once she sends out the blast, it's going to be the orange wave. And then the moment the orange is gone, the hitbox is also gone as well. As long as it's purple or this pink here, it's not active. And that's true for all of Moon and signatures. A very interesting property with the signature is that if you GC it, you actually fall down quite a bit. This is a very common option that people like to use on a variety of legends. You can GC it, hit someone on the ground, and also extend your hitbox upwards because let's say someone's jumping around. If you GC it, you can still hit them in the air like that. Now what's unique about this move is that you can actually GC it from higher than you normally would because you're going to fall down and still hit them anyway. Despite quickly moving you forward, this move doesn't seem to have any additional bonus with momentum like chase dodging or dashing. You'll notice if I use the side zig right here, I end up right about this spot. And if I start it from the same position but with a dash, I end up pretty much in the same exact spot. It's not like moves like Qatar Sidelight, for example, that give you an extra boost on top of it. A lot of this is because you're halted by the end of the signature, no matter how much momentum you have going in. You could have the max amount of speed dashing across platforms, but you're still going to be stuck in place by the time you strum that final note. What this means is that although it's decent for things like GC recovering, it doesn't actually go as far as you might think it would because the body doesn't extend as far as the hitbox does. On the topic of the hitbox, it's actually quite generous. In mid HP values, you can catch people dodging in with things like that. Despite looking like you 
you may overshoot because you're moving forward, that initial spin hitbox is enough to still catch your opponents because you'll notice it's going to catch them as you're moving into their zone. As for that final extension, it reaches about one and a half character widths in front of you, which is pretty good considering how far you're moving forward throughout the move. While it deals over half the damage of this move on its own, ideally if you're trying to build up damage you don't want to hit with only that final blast, you'll notice that's about 18, and if you hit with the rest of it, it's about 24. Given that this move has a good amount of horizontal distance, if you use it closer to the lip of the stage, you can KO way earlier than you would have otherwise. The move has a good amount of force, it's, it's not the most in the game, but considering Moonin's average strength stat, it's quite decent, all things considered. Overall, this is a move that we'll probably see a lot of use in finishing strings, knocking people off stage, reading dodges, stuff like that. Be careful though, because you may not go as far as you expect to, like I mentioned earlier, because of that halt of momentum. The good thing is that you probably won't find yourself overshooting this signature too much because of that generous hitbox like I mentioned earlier. I think this signature will probably see a lot of use, and it's well warranted. Not only is it quite cool, it's quite good. Moving on to the scythe down sig, now the first thing you may notice about this move is that it has a good amount of startup. From the time that I press this button, it does take quite a while for the full hitbox to come out. Unlike a move like Ragnar Katar down sig, which covers a similar area, a lot of this startup is in a big animation, this backwards flip, so people may have a little bit more time to react to it once they get used to the animations. A huge benefit of this signature is in its active frames. You'll notice if you use it on stage, not only do you get this initial arrow that gets sent out from your hand, but it gets this ground splash, and then an additional ground bounce after that to extend the range. Like I mentioned earlier, as long as it's orange, it's active, and as long as it's purple, it's not. And what this means is because of this active orange bouncing hitbox, it's not useless on stage. A lot of these spiking signatures, a lot of their power kind of diminishes the moment you use it on stage, but you'll notice right there, it's still super good because of that extension. It's also not the easiest move to punish because you're out of recovery frames before you hit the ground. You'll notice if I use this, I can jump out safely. I can attack out safely. I can maybe even dodge out safely. It's most often obvious use is to guard the lip of the stage, you can use the aerial version to spike people downward, send them to their doom, even GC it like that to send them that way. Because it has this different version, it just adds on more to Scythe's ability to ledge trap. A couple quirks about this move, because you backflip quite a bit, you'll actually have to be much closer to the lip than you may think you would. You have to be around here to get the offstage version, because otherwise, even if you're right here, it's still going to be grounded. Now while that makes it more risky than a lot of moves that cover a similar area, what you can actually do is slide charge it a little bit and get that bounce to come back on stage. Along the same vein, you can use that to refresh your jumps off the wall, like that. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm all over the place right now. I have an idea. Oh my god, I touched the wall. It was insane. It was an insane idea. Part of what makes this technique effective is the long active frames we discussed earlier. You'll notice, if I hit this opponent off stage and I use the slide charge version, I'm still able to hit them even if I'm not hitting them with the spike version directly because of this initial arrow like that. And what's great is that even if your spacing or your timing isn't quite accurate, those long active frames might end up helping you net the KO anyway. It's such a huge asset and certainly makes up for that longish startup. I feel like this is one of those moves that if you're just starting to play Moonin, it might seem a bit underpowered, but as you start to learn about its properties and its mechanics a little bit more, you'll actually start to see the strengths a whole lot more. You'll notice I missed that one right there, but it's okay because I jumped back on stage and now I have another chance to edge guard. Let's move on now to Bow Ensig, which is kind of similar in that it has a lot more startup than you might think, but makes up for it in other areas. Because of its startup, hitting things like downline into Ensig strings is not nearly as reliable as people like Koji, people like Diana. You'll notice even if I'm doing this frame perfect, there's still a good amount of a gap here where the opponent can potentially fast fall right out of this. Now, depending on your spacing, the dodge window, the opponent's ability to fast fall or jump out of it depends, right? Because if you do it like that, that's not going to hit, meaning you got to do a chase dodge, but then the dodge window opens up even further. If you hit it some what's stacked like this, it's going to be much smaller and jumping out of that is a lot more difficult. As for dodge reading, this is useful in the upward direction, so out of sidelight you can do a chase dodge forward, cover an upward dodge like that. The other dodge you can cover with this same option is the upward in, you'll notice that still hits, but something to note here is that if you're super close with this sidelight, you're actually going to overshoot, so you got to hit this sidelight very far away if you want this to connect. That's kind of the trend with this end sig, to read your opponent it generally has to be a pretty specific scenario, and you also have to commit quite early because of that startup. That makes it much more a matter of having a straight up read than just trying to cover like six options at once using just one signature in one scenario. Essentially what that means is that a lot of follow-ups with this NSIG is higher commitment than it might be with other characters. Those downsides are counterbalanced though by having a metric ton of force. For a base 5 strength character, the amount of force this move has is pretty darn high. I just said pretty darn high, I feel like an elementary school teacher. <laughs>
A couple more things is that the hitbox is quite generous. I don't think I really need to talk about it much. You can just look at this image right here and it kind of does all the explaining for me. The last thing I want to mention is that it carries your momentum on use and it has this little suction effect. So even if you're using it while dashing or chase dodging, you're still going to be able to land this move on your opponent. It's quite nice, quite fluid and a great signature. Moving on to both side sig, this is probably Moonin's most versatile signature. It, I mean, just looking at it, this is probably a lot of people's favorites and the way it feels is fantastic. It doesn't have that many recovery frames. So even if you use it like a GC right here, you can jump out pretty early. Now the one caveat to this fluidity is that it doesn't give you a chase dodge on hit. You'll notice I don't get anything there. I'm mashing my dodge key. I guess it's technically a projectile, which is why, I don't know, it doesn't work like a lot of the other projectiles in Brahalla, which is why it's a bit confusing, but that is the case with the move currently. You probably noticed that this SIG is fantastic off stage. It's one of the best GC recovery SIGs in the entire game. Not only does it give you this height and distance, but because the low recovery frames, you can just hop right back on stage, carry that momentum, it doesn't halt you in place like that. Not to mention, of course, that you're doing it while sending out active spiking hitboxes of your own. If someone's trying to recover back to the stage, you can track their movement, maybe they dodge in with those active hitboxes of your own. It's super good for that because as they're moving, their invuln's going to be over and then you still have something out to hit them while making it back yourself. Now to add on top of all of that, you cannot overshoot this move while GCing it because it has its own wall version like that. You'll notice once the first shot hits, the rest of it will follow, which means you can do something really fancy like that, where as you're jumping back onto the stage, you still have an active hitbox that mind you is going to send at that horizontal angle off stage as you're jumping back. Meaning, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but if I can get this Bodvar off stage like that, yep, as I'm jumping back on stage safely, he's getting edge guarded and getting knocked off stage. If you want to do some really cheeky ledge trapping, you can do something like this, where you leap off stage, then jump back as you're slide charging and send out these active hitboxes. If you do it correctly, sometimes you can get each of them at a different height like that, yep, you'll notice all of this is still active frames. These explosions are still active, you have multiple at once, covering multiple sections of the wall and leaping back safely yourself. You'll notice in these couple sequences just how effective this can be. You can gauge the specific amount of risk you want based on how far you charge out. You'll notice you can make it so all three of the shots are on stage, only one of them is off stage. It's super, super cool. And right there, you'll notice that one sent them straight down. Sometimes that happens. It's kind of like Diana's NSIG where if it hits on the wall in a specific way, it sends at this very brutal angle downward where there's really nothing the opponent can do. They get hit with the full force of the move and get spiked to their death. This is one of the most versatile, unique spiking signatures in the entire game. You can edge guard, you can edge trap, you can use it on stage because it's still going to have a good amount of force, cover the lip of the stage, GC to recovery, I mean it's really got it all. This is a 10 out of 10 signature and honestly I'm glad because it just looks so cool. Now I got so excited talking about it that I didn't even mention its properties. It has three different shots, you'll notice this is not active because it's purple, because it's pink, and then it's orange, it gets sent down, it, it, I've been using it throughout. It hits as you're sending downward and then it also has a splash hitbox that hits as well. I don't think I can sing the praises of this move enough. It, like I said, it's a 10 out of 10 signature and if you're looking to pick up Moonin, this is certainly a SIG to master. I'm running out of time here, so let's just get through this down sig really quickly. First, as you send it out, it has this initial foot hitbox that launches a bit into the air, widens, and then turns into these music notes, which extend outwards again for as long as it's orange. This is a very versatile signature. It leaps you into the air, meaning it changes your hurtbox location. It also has a low amount of recovery frame, so you can just jump straight out of it and kind of continue the chase, continue whatever you want to do. Edge guarding, you can actually spike with this move if it hits correctly. Like, what is that angle? You'll notice that it hits stacked, it hits people in the air as you're jumping up. Up, and of course it hits people as these music notes extend. Depending on where you hit this move, the angle of force can change quite dramatically. This one's going to send straight up, this one's going to be more diagonal, this one is going to be more horizontal, and then you saw the spike one earlier, we'll see if I can replicate that, that one is quite brutal. Because this hits on both sides of Moonin and it has the long active frames, this is one of the best dodge punishing tools that Bo has to offer. Just by doing a sidelight into a dash or chase dodge forward down sig, you can cover a bunch of different dodges. An inward dodge like that, a downward dodge like this, a diagonal inward dodge like this. Now, if the bot doesn't frame perfect, it'll turn into a dash, but it still covers that one regardless. And the most impressive one to me, the spot dodge with the same exact timing. Most of the time in scenarios like these where multiple dodges are covered with the same option, you have to change up the timing if you want to hit the spot dodge because it has longer active frames or longer invuln frames than all of the other dodges. But with this down sig, as long as you hit the side light close, it's still going to hit and you don't have to change up the timing whatsoever. The biggest downside of this move is that it completely halts your momentum on use, which can make it feel sticky at times and also 
means that you can't circumvent some of the startup, like with this NSIG, for example. Let's say I'm trying to get to Bodvar's position. If Bodvar's just jumping around, I can kind of dash forward and use my movement forward to circumvent some of the startup. To contrast, if I want to do the same thing with Downsig, I can't start it from right here because it's just not going to hit. I have to start it from much closer. Essentially, what that means is that it's significantly less fluid and a higher risk option than it would have been otherwise. Despite that, though, this is still an extremely good signature. I think I said in the everything about Moonin in the six minutes or less before we can even get our hands on her, I said this is probably going to be the sleeper pick, and I think that's still going to be the case. Especially at high level play, this just seems like it has so much utility, so much wackiness, and wackiness is something that I'm a fan of. I don't know, sending at different angles and it's just like, okay, why did that send that direction? It will never not be funny. I mean, look at that. Like, what, what, what was that? Anyway, that's going to do it for the Moon and Mini Guide. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something along the way. Some fun new tactic, some cheese strat, some niche scenario that you didn't think of before. One way or another, though, I wish you the best of luck on the battlefield, ranking up, experimental, whatever it is. Good luck, soldiers. You got this.